and then we can get started. All right, we're here with Graham, uh, an SRE here at GitLab, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a project he's working on about adding Vault as a GitLab managed application. And this is related to something in the secrets management category called allowing a user to set up Vault in a Kubernetes cluster. So I'll let you take it away and kind of sure. talk a little bit about what you're doing. Yep, sure. So the kind of the, if we take a step back on it, like the initial kind of starting point for this work was actually um, based off the use case and requirements for the GitLab infrastructure team itself. So we run in gitlab.com, obviously, which is arguably the world's biggest installation of GitLab. Um, so it's quite big. It's got quite a lot of complex infrastructure to it. Uh, what we're doing as a team at the moment is we have a few different mechanisms of doing what we call, you know, secrets management, I, I guess you could say. Um, the big one, the big things being like username and passwords. And then also one thing that's very important to us that we're managing ourselves at the moment is uh, internal certificate management. So all of the SSL certificates for all the publicly facing websites. And then we have a bunch of internal services that customers don't see that we want to be encrypted by TLS. So we want to do a lot of certificate management stuff related to that. So currently as a team, we utilize Chef for our infrastructure management. And then we have certain hooks, plugins and workflows around Chef to hook into Google Cloud Storage and Google Cloud KMS, so the key management system there, to basically store all our secrets and encrypt them and then pull them out via Chef and then deploy them on the servers as needed. But this has a, a, a raft of shortcomings, including it's the integration is all written by us, so it's very cumbersome. Um, the integration is, uh, it's tricky if you wanna, it's not really easily to automate at the moment. Um, and one of the big things is with the migration of gitlab.com slowly to Kubernetes as well, um, all of the work we've done on the Chef integration kind of gets thrown away because moving to Kubernetes, uh, uh, basically, we're not using Chef anymore. So one of the things we discussed um, was how do we do secret management as a whole better? Like, how do we as a team internally do that better for GitLab.com? Um, and so I've had experience with Vault in the past. And I think, that, to be fair, I've only been in the company six months. But before I started, there was already on the, the basically a design that we should look at using HashCorp Vault internally to centralize all our secret management. There's a raft of other benefits, obviously, things like auditability, better policy control, um, things like that. So it was overall just how can we bring all of the secrets we have, which are managed in multiple locations together in one system, and then how can we just kind of use that to drive better security, better automation, um, a better deployment pattern for things like Kubernetes and new deployment scenarios and things moving forward. So I've been working on that on and off the past few months um, in the infrastructure team. We kind of get our priorities focused around various times, depending on what we need to do and what GitLab.com is doing. Um, but essentially what had happened is I'd gotten to the point where I had written more or less um, some Terraform code and um, well, myself and some others in my team, actually, I can't just say it's just me, uh, written, some, written some Terraform code and then I'd written some basically Kubernetes deployment work to actually install and run Vault, HashiCorp Vault, the open source edition inside a cluster. And we kind of stood that up at least for testing. And then um, at the moment, we're kind of just looking at Vault itself, not just deployment and management of it, of actually using Vault and how do we use all that. And that's a whole other thread of discussion. And that's a very long and complicated process of how we walk down that path. Um, so yeah, so I've been working on and off with that uh, over the past few months and then Part of my work as well is I've been focusing on the, I've been looking into the GitLab managed apps and, and auto DevOps and a whole bunch of the GitLab product Kubernetes integration pieces. And I've been working with various other people around that and how we can improve that and how we can work on that as well. Um, one of the things that come out of that is they're changing the way they're doing the GitLab managed apps. Before it was like you click buttons in the UI and underneath the covers, it's actually the installation is coming from the Rails web app. Whereas now they're moving to having the apps installed via CI and they're just, they're basically they're changing the whole model of uh, how the GitLab.com product does GitLab managed apps and, and what have you. And one of the things I noticed as part of that was, um, a, I found an issue saying, hey, we would like people to have Vault as a GitLab managed app deployed via CI onto Kubernetes. And um, there was another issue that 
users want better like CI integration and GitLab integration into Bolt. So I actually saw an opportunity here because I'd done a bunch of deployment work around Vault on Kubernetes, which is basically we just keep it in a repo for ourselves used for our own work. I was like, I can actually tweak that and actually modify that, put it into the merge request that I've put up here for GitLab managed app CI. And then essentially it makes it into the GitLab product and no longer am I kind of managing a deployment process with Vault itself. It's basically we'll, do the same way as the product. Like we can just leverage that just the same way we leverage other pieces of GitLab's managed apps like Ingress, Helm and uh, bits of Prometheus and all, all the other stuff. So it's just a case of what we were doing stuff by ourselves. and looked like the product wanted to take that as well. So I could just move that over there and then I'll basically get rid of all my, you know, kind of, let's get, I guess you could say local fork work or whatever. And we'll just go back to, to doing the GitLab managed app stuff. So once again, it was primarily driven by our use case internally. Um, and it's certainly, you know, when this merge request kind of gets massaged and get gotten to a point where it's kind of workable, it's certainly then a user could conceivably install Vault themselves into their own Kubernetes cluster via the, the new GitLab managed apps via CI process. Um, there's certainly a difference though between having Vault running and using it successfully, which I think there's actually probably a few different issues open through the GitLab product about that. Like we want the CI runners to have Vault integration. We want the GitLab product to have the GitLab web app to have Vault integration. And that's kind of pieces that are at least outside my scope because I'm in operations and, and more focused on that side. Whereas the development teams, the backend teams it should be focusing on those bits and pieces. But that's kind of an overview of where it's at, why we're interested in it and how I kind of, got that merge request up in the first place. And I will quickly mention as well as there is the start of talks about us as in the GitLab infrastructure team running not only Vault for us to run gitlab.com, but also running Vault is essentially a managed service so that people using gitlab.com can say, you know, look, I've got passwords, I've got secrets. They can basically push them into a vault instance that we run on their behalf so that their deployment pipelines and everything can can make use of that. So they're two separate use cases. One is like, I guess you could say vault for customers. And then there's like vault for us as a company internally. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. Um, we're currently working through like the requirements and definition of yeah. how we would support a Uber instance for our customers, right? But I think our first pass is just getting like a Vault Enterprise instance up and running for our internal use case and hosting a separate one for our customers. But around this um, managed application, would our end users be able to leverage? Yeah. It? So that's a good question. So Vault out of, if you look at every GitLab managed app we have so far, most of them are fairly simple and very straightforward in what they do in their purpose. Things like cert manager and stuff, you know, get your certificate or the ingots controller will allow you to expose Kubernetes pods easily. Vault is probably the most complicated app we have potentially going into GitLab managed apps. And there's certainly no kind of, I mean, we, the goal would be to have some kind of click button, bolts there, one size fits all kind of philosophy. But due to the nature of A, the complexity of Vault and B, the user space it occupies, which is trying to go for secrets and high level of security, you need a non, you need a non-trivial amount of knowledge to run Vault itself. So certainly this work, if you want to, if you are a person who knows Vault quite well, you could use this work and click a button and get Vault instance up and running. Um, but then it's like, well, what do I do now that it's running? Certainly becomes much more of a different and more interesting story. On top of that, there's probably, unlike a lot of the other GitLab managed apps where there might be one or two settings you tweak slightly, Vault is very much a, a very tweaked per user right. or customer. Right? It's very, very... Uh, heavily tweaked because right. you've got things about how do you authenticate the vault? Are you using like something like Okta? Are you using Google Cloud? Are you using something else? Then there's also the storage, underlying storage of all the secret management stuff. So for example, we're on Google Cloud. So we use J uh, Google KMS. But if you're on Amazon, you use IAM. If you're on 
Microsoft use something else. If you're on-premise, as in one of our many on-premise customers, then there's completely a different raft of options. Um, so it's kind of like you need to, they, they, the upstream documentation can be like, you know, you could do this and that, or you could do this in a kind of development mode, but we have to be careful because we can definitely set them up some same defaults, but we do not want to give people a false sense of security or, or make it, yeah, like, like make it clear of you know what that the pros and cons of of what they get out of it. Um, yeah, like in our documentation, we should specify that this really isn't usable until you implement your company standards for Vault, right? Yeah, and I think in the past with the GitLab managed apps version one, that was almost impossible for us to do because of the user interface and experience was very limited and what we could do with the alpha of GitLab managed apps v two via CI. They basically now like it is very easy for you if you read the documentation with that and you know vault to go okay right i do want gitlab to deploy my vault and i would like it to you know authenticate to this and set up some storage backed onto this for me and that can do it and that can still i feel and that's what we're going to be using it for provide a lot of value around the upgrade and management of vault itself and a bit of you know the integration in terms of being a gitlab managed app and get an overview of what cluster basically the whole gitlab kubernetes management right. workflow is very nice that we want to leverage but um, you know, there's still that. I, I still need to be like telling the GitLab managed app of, of quite a bit of information of how I particularly want things to, to shake out. Okay. Then there's also the question of once you have Vault up and running, the way you kind of say, well, this user can do this or this CI job can have this secret. The policy of that, side of it. Yeah, yeah, all the policy stuff. Yes, of course. So all of that is you know, very up to debate how you want to manage that. Um, yeah, like we do it in Terraform, other people may have their own tooling, but that's once again a, a problem kind of left to the reader, I guess, more or less. And, and really we won't prescribe that until we provide a single instance for users anyways, right? Mm -hmm. Like it'll probably be, you know, if we choose to go down that path, we're still kind of in validation of do that. You, do you know, so if we, when we kind of get to that point where we're kind of doing the offering for customers, is the is the idea to be like you know here's vault for secrets you can manage your secrets in here for ci jobs for gitlab work and stuff and not just for anything outside of gitlab like because conceivably we could expose a public vault endpoint that people could authenticate to you and have anything in their entire infrastructure so essentially we're running vault for people whether they use get you know, they could not even use anything else and get yeah, right. They but could. I feel like we want to kind of restrict that or I, I, I mean, we could kind of put a disclaimer that if you store secrets here, they are stored inside a GitLab provided instance. Mm. Um, but if we were to then say like in the future of all futures, GitLab might be the central hub for how you integrate everything that you're doing with your software. Okay. So yeah, it, might, it, it might be necessary yeah, in order nice. for yeah. us to manage all of that. So if yeah. we're looking at us being the end all be all for someone's workflow, it makes a lot of sense. You know, yeah, if sure. they're managing issues and we provide an integration to service now, we have a whole other external system that we're gonna be managing right. notifications okay. and workflows from. So that's like supervisionary, probably yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah. five years, 10 years down the road. But when I think about what we're planning now and what we're putting the seeds for is that we would want to be able to support that long-term vision that GitLab is the everything, right? Yeah, you gotcha. And that's okay, where yeah, we, no, that makes we, sense. we could support that. But in the beginnings, we might say that, hey, disclaimer, if you're putting things that are not integrated with the GitLab or completely unrelated systems, GitLab does have access to this, like in transparency, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm, okay, that makes sense. And I think with, uh, I mean, there's probably a very deep hole to go down as well. I think with Enterprise Vault as well, with the multi-tenancy stuff, people can actually- Namespaces. Potentially, yeah, yeah namespace and lock and unlock their own parts of the vault so they can actually get a bit more control over that as well. So right. I was just more trying to understand the direction of Vault, whether it's like, oh no, we just want to use it for like CI versus parts, or it's actually something we do potentially see as a generic solution for customers, which sounds like the latter, which is yeah. very interesting, very exciting. It would be really cool to give back to the open source community too, you know, <laughs> like if we think about our offering as a whole and what we'd want to bring forward with the, with GitLab, um, mm. it could be really cool and compelling. I would say the immediate near term, we need a better way to manage CI variables in GitLab 
and secrets yeah. in GitLab. <laughs> and we need a, a more secure, robust offering there as a part of just the CI CD workflow. And Vault can be and will yeah. be the solution for that. And then as we build more and more on top of it, we'll, we'll be able to like inject better value for our users. But I'm very interested in this GitLab managed application and kind of wondering um, how can my team help move mm -hmm. this along? What are some things that you feel like um, we would need in order to bridge the gap between the internal use case and an external user using this as a managed application? Like, I'm, I think I'm not really, sure. yeah, no, I, I think we're in a relatively good space with that merge request. It's, it's back to me now to do a little bit of work, but that's mostly just like tweaking yeah. and rebasing some stuff because they've changed some stuff. And the second part I think will be, um, I need to do some documentation and I'd be you know, more than happy for your team and, and anyone else to have a review of it, both from a technical side of how this works and if, is this correct? And more of a Does this setting make sense? the ex <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also just a making sure we get the wording right for customers so they understand you know, what, what it is and the limitations and what they, what they get and what they don't get out of the box kind of thing. Because yeah. more or less what will happen is the, the user experience will be, certainly you can like be tick the box or whatever it is and say, yeah, I'd like Vault installed and here's my cluster set up and away I go. And it will run, it will install and set itself up correctly. But actually there's a, there's a few different post install steps right. people need to do that, we, that I, I'm not going to handle or automate because they involve setting, getting Nor master credentials. Right. Yeah. So it's going to be a kind of a case of, you know, if you wish to install this GitLab Manager app, when the app is installed successfully, perhaps maybe some reference to the Vault documentation of the Vault is locked, you need to unlock it, take your master keys and, you know, put them away. And then once that's done, you can now validate that it's available and then whatever you choose to do from there kind of thing is, is up right. to you. And they'll still need to figure out, like, are they going to use what kind of authentication method in order mm. to integrate, right? Because if even if they're mm. just... Yeah, spinning yeah, up totally. in a Kubernetes cluster, they're going to have to like configure their app role if they're going to use machines, yeah. they're going to have to authenticate with Git, GitLab or GitHub, like whatever. They'll still have to choose their their juice of what they're going to be yeah, totally. authenticating in order for it to work. Because um, we don't really support that natively yet, obviously. Um, yes, yeah. So and I think that's that's a, an interesting point as well, is that's the big key for us deploying. Like I, I've got a fairly strong handle now on how to deploy it both for potentially for customers. If, if tomorrow they were like, if my boss said, you know, we have to absolutely deploy this customer straight away, I think I'd actually be at the point where I could comfortably do that, for, like an instance for yeah. customers. So the, from a sysadmin or an operator per side of like running and understanding Bolt, I think we've got a relatively sane um, handle on now. The big part for us next, which is where the pro, our internal deployment of it is at the moment is really, I've done some work which I can send through about some documentation of how we're looking at machine roles and app roles and things like that and, and even authentication, but it's by no means fully fleshed out. Um, and it's by no means, um, you know, the final kind of work. And I yeah, think that's, uh, yeah. yeah. And I think there's a, there's a good question there to be asked how, we at GitLab need to manage that information somehow, whether it's we come up with a way to manage that just for GitLab internally, or whether there's an opportunity here for us to figure out a way to manage it that could also be somehow fed back into the product to make it easier for users to manage it, right? right. That makes sense. Right. Like, I could, I've, I've done a little bit of work already that's on like, yep, setting up this and setting up that in Vault. And it's sitting in a repo anywhere. And I don't think anyone else besides GitLab would use it. It just kind of sits right. there and it's, it's all mapped to our GitLab org structure and stuff. But I'm certainly happy to, if, if, if there's a way, I'm not even sure what that looks like yet, but if there's a way we can be like, oh, well, we can bring that out and make that something that the product could use or customers could leverage as well as part of this, you know, I'd be awful about that. that yeah. That'd, that yeah. Otherwise, we're just doing a lot of little silos of, of vault management, I guess. And I want to try and avoid that if we can. I would like to have a single source of vault management if we can. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm not quite sure what that looks like yet. Um, um, that makes sense. So we can, we can iterate on that when you're ready, when that's appropriate. I think from a 
from like an immediate next steps of the vision and how we're partnering with HashiCorp and like what we're looking to do from an integration standpoint, there's a couple of like proof of concepts out there. One is using kind of an identity API and relying on JWTs yep. to pass through um, tokens from users that have been authenticated. Okay. Um, and then there's another POC where GitLab and Vault have authenticated in any given method. So this could be an app role, this could be a user authenticating into GitLab, which of course, if you're using a browser versus a machine, um, there are two different kind of use cases, but this would require uh, GitLab to fetch on the Rails side a secret from Vault and then pass that and then the runner would run. So those are the two proof of concepts that are kind of out there today. And so both of them rely on the rail side handling these okay. secrets and tokens rather than something being passed in the runner, mainly because one shared runners could be a really big nightmare yeah. for handling yeah. multiple credentials and shared runners. So outside of that, we're relying on the rail system and application to handle all that data and just kind of pass it over to then kind of be used inside the pipeline. But the goal would be that we wouldn't want to store super secret secrets <laughs> inside our pipeline. Um, and, and is the setup of the bolt, like setting the app roles and all of that information in these POCs, is that just like done by hand or a script or something at the moment or? Yeah, so on the, on the first POC where we're just looking at um, the policy, it's specified in the JWT. So that would be manually, right? Okay, yeah. And then the first one is um, inherited from the authenticated user. Right. And that would be, so policy set on the vault side. Yes, So, but what's setting the policy initially? Is it just someone the, going in? The, and the user, yeah, like the, the user, user. Has, oh, set it, yeah, okay, has set it on the vault side. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, okay. But I'll send you both of those issues so that if you want to start, like, mm. if you need to mind meld on them and think about them with me, I would love yeah, that. Yeah, I'll send you the, there's a readiness review doc. Um, yeah. But it does sound like, uh, Graham, that you're in good shape for this managed application piece for Vault. Yeah. Okay. The the only other question I had, and it just uh, asked because you were talking about part partnership with HashiCorp, do we, is there, is there potential here to offer this GitLab managed app to offer both the open source and the enterprise version or is enterprise not something we want to touch yet? Yeah, so it might actually be that we offer enterprise as a package solution for all GitLab customers. So like we would eat the cost of enterprise for every GitLab user. So they would install the GitLab managed app, but actually get the enterprise version. Okay. Okay. That so, way we can support namespaces and we can yeah, do yeah, sure, availability. Sure. We can do all the things that you get with the console backend as well. In that case, I'm using the upstream HashiCorp, basically Helm chart vault installation mm -hmm. method, which I think is only open source only. So that's something we may need to go back to them and say, Hey, if you, if you want us to do the enterprise stuff, you need to make, there needs to be work to support that to the enterprise version so, as well. I don't this, know if they've got. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I got excited. Oh, you're right. <laughs> so this is where like we see a fork in our use cases that even if the long-term vision is to be like GitLab as a company wants to provide the most secure way natively to handle secrets and HashiCorp as the market leader for this solution is the person company that we're going to rely on for that. But there's also this use case that customers are like, I've had my vault for years. This is the HashiCorp vault I want to use. Mm -hmm. I need to be Jeez, able to use my vault with oh, GitLab. Yeah, gotcha. So that could be an open source configuration yeah, if they've yeah. like really pimped out with their own code. So they'll want to point GitLab to that, which that, means we yeah. would need to support it anyway. Yeah, it's just it's but, a black box to us. Totally. It, so yeah. we would want to suggest to HashiCorp that our users' experience should be universal with vault you know like they shouldn't we shouldn't if a customer wanted to upgrade using from from their from their helm chart you know like that's only supported in oss to enterprise they should be able to right. simply do that or right. if they wanted to downgrade from enterprise and point it to a helm chart instance they should be able to do that too gotcha so like this is where we start thinking about replication and federation and 
and how mm -hmm. we're going to support that as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it's definitely something that we're like, ha like hashing, yeah, yeah. hashing sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I think that, that, that makes sense. Yeah. From the deployment side, like we handle like what we've got so far and what I've put up there, we'll handle things like HA, we'll handle a few instances that can do rolling upgrades and stuff. The only thing it doesn't do is kind of geo replication, but yeah. we, there's a, there's a bigger story around GitLab and geo replication and the status of that anyway, I think so. And there is. Yeah. From like my experience of talking with the, the product manager over geo, it seems like it's a big bear that we're yeah. trying to, and even offering multiple instances of .com, you know, for yeah, re the regional yeah. support. Yeah. And because vault potentially for us internally, um, you know, will be basically one of the most important core services that we'll have obviously because we if we haven't got access to passwords right. we can't set anything up you know geo support for vault might actually be one of the first things we need kind of thing like anything that's a basic underlying service uh database is probably another one right like anything right. that kind of sits underneath everything and is like really important to have is actually probably a bigger target for us for geo so this could potentially as we go down the path of wanting to push a vault either for customers or use internally Right. Um, the geo question actually is going to come up relatively soon. That makes, that makes sense. And we've talked about it with HashiCorp briefly and mm -hmm. they support multiple locations and yeah. clusters for like failover as well in different regions. Okay. But I think um, that's enterprise only, right? Which is what we would be using for yeah, our- Yeah, that, that's okay. I just- yeah, for, yeah okay. for our internal instance only. Like, you know, even if, even if we scrap this idea of supporting customers on it, Internally, gotcha. I think we're going I think to end we need with, to, yeah, yeah go to totally. Vault Enterprise. It just makes sense for yep. everything like that. Okay. Yep. Um, well, perfect. So I think this was awesome, by the way. Thank, Thank you, you for taking the time for, That's all right. for like decomposing yeah, it appreciate. and walking me through it. This was very exciting for me to hear about it. And I think yeah, that, no um, worries. I'll bring you into the fold more as we start to investigate Vault because you seem like one, you're a really great expert in this field, but you also have some, some ideas and perspective that I can, I can leverage yeah, into totally. my product. So thank you. Yeah, um, no worries. Um, need... I think, I, I don't know for sure yet, but I think the next quarter we could start to prioritize the bolt work a bit more. So it might not just be me, it might be other people in my yes. team, which would be great as well. That'd be yes. awesome. Um, it will be a really big deal for my team. Um, so obviously like as we start to, to get up and running, if we do investigate more into like things like expanding the GitLab managed application, it'll be really helpful in the next quarter to have alignment in that, mm -hmm. in that view. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, ahead. I was just actually on top of that, there's <laughs> getting into Vault, I, just an idea is just kind of fairly out of left field. I do know that Vault actually had some Kubernetes, they had a Kubernetes operator or there was one in the works and there was a bunch of Kubernetes native ways to manage policies and stuff in Vault which I never got the time to look down, but I'd be actually, I'd be interested in hearing HashiCorp's side Stands of that, that story yeah. as well. Cause if they can do vault management in native, in Kubernetes native objects, that is both the path we in GitLab infrastructure want to take. We want to push management of everything into Kubernetes like custom resources and stuff. Um, and B for the GitLab managed app side, it would make it infinitely easier because you could have a GitLab managed app that was essentially your vault. Like you would have a GitLab managed app for Vault itself, and it would be very easy to then have a GitLab managed app, which was essentially like all your Vault configure or a standard set of Vault configuration applied on top of that. Because at the moment you kind of got to either do it with curl commands or CLI commands, or we're using Terraform. But ideally, with the whole push for cloud native, is if we'd have Kubernetes custom resource objects and then an operator that can interpret them and apply them to a Vault instance, that would be the gold standard for us. Say that one more time. I'm transcribing it to yeah, my, sure. sh my shared Sorry. agenda with Vault, with, with HashiCorp. So with the push for cloud native, we would need... Yeah. We would like, if possible, Vault configuration management done via Kubernetes native resources using an operator or CRDs custom resource definitions. And I, as I said, I think it exists, but I'm not sure A, if that's supported officially by Vault or who's done the work or what status it's at or anything like that. So if they know something about that, anything, I would be interested in, in finding that out. Okay. Um, let me share this with you. And sure. um, 
let me know if there's other questions that you may have on this. Your time zone might actually work out. I could probably um, include you in those meetings with HashiCorp. So even if you just wanted to like listen in or ask questions, you're more than welcome to. Um, sure. But I'll slack this to you. So if you have any other questions for HashiCorp, just drop it in the um, in the next meeting section. And I also have a internal requirements issue okay. for our needs to support HashiCorp as our provider of choice um, for sure. secrets. I well, think David Smith might have already pulled me in on that, but I'll um I'll double check. I think also, he I'll. I'll yeah. send you the link to this. So this Perfect. document here is a, probably an accurate summary of all of our work so far, including how we deploy Vault, the two app roles we were setting up to authenticate users against GitLab and machines against Google, and like just a bunch of policy and a whole bunch of other work that's kind of gone in there. So that oh, one. This is amazing. You just made my jaw drop. This is good, yeah. dude. This so is that's. Awesome. That's the kind of where we're at at the moment. It's not like a hundred percent and I can provide you the links to the actual like source code of like how you do it and, and run it underneath. Yeah. Um, and this is where we're kind of at and um, I, yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Well, perfect. I gotta, I gotta jump, but thank yes. you so much for your time. No um, this has been awesome. Awesome.